What is up, So Hills kids? I'm so glad that you are watching today. I hope you guys have had a wonderful new year so far. We are three weeks, don't know what that was, three weeks into our new year. I hope you guys are doing great. You set some resolutions and you got some things going. For us, we're going to be diving into more stories about Moses and the people of Israel. If you haven't picked up yet, they're a little complicated. They're a little whiny. They might complain a little bit, uh, but they're still God's chosen people. And that'll play into today's story. You see, today we're going to be talking about the golden calf. If you know the story of the Israelites leaving Egypt, you know it's not the best part of their story, but it is part of their story nonetheless. And we're talking about worship, so we're going to see what that means for us today. So let's check out today's video on Moses and the Israelites, and I'll catch up with you guys after that. Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. While God met with Moses, the Israelites at the bottom of the mountain were getting impatient. They began to wonder, where is Moses? What has taken him so long? Is, is he still alive? The Israelites went to Moses' brother, Aaron. Make us a God to lead us, they said. We don't know what happened to Moses. So Aaron collected gold from the people and made a statue of a calf that they could worship. God saw what the people were doing and he was angry. I will destroy these people, God said. Moses said, remember the great promise you made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You promised to give them as many offspring as there are stars in the sky. You promised to bless them and give them land. So God did not destroy them. Moses went down from the mountain carrying two stone tablets on which God had written the laws. Moses got closer to the camp and saw that the people were dancing before the golden calf. So he threw down the stone tablets, smashing them at the bottom of the mountain. Then he destroyed the golden calf. The next day, Moses went back up the mountain to talk to God. These people have sinned against you, he said. Please forgive their sin. God told Moses to return to the people and lead them. When the time comes, I will punish them for their sin, God said. God sent a terrible sickness to the people because they worshiped the golden calf. God continued to meet with Moses and give him laws and instructions. One morning, Moses went up the mountain to meet with God. God came down in a cloud and he said, the Lord is a compassionate and gracious God but he will not leave the guilty unpunished. Moses bowed down and worshiped God. Lord, please go with us, he said. Forgive our sin and accept us as your people. Moses acted as the people's mediator, standing for them before God. Moses could not do anything to make up for their sin, but we have a better mediator, Jesus. Jesus paid for our sin on the cross and stands for us before God. When we trust in Jesus, our sins are forgiven. All right, so come on. Don't you, do you ever feel like that when you read a Bible story? You're like, come on, like, the, oh gosh, this was so easy. This is not that hard. And it's easy to be like that, especially reading it and knowing the story and being, you know, several thousand years after then. <laughs> easy mistakes. But the reality is we all make mistakes. We mess up and maybe we don't accidentally create an uh, idol and, you know, whatever. It's really funny if you actually read the scripture, Aaron, when Moses says, like, what'd you do, Aaron? Aaron's like, well... I just put the gold in the fire and this came out. He, he acts like it's some weird thing that happened. And we kind of play off our own sin like that, right? Maybe we yell at our parents and we're just like, well, I didn't, didn't really mean to yell. It just came, came out. Or, or you get mad at your sister and you throw the remote at her. And I've definitely never done that before. And you're just like, it slipped out of my hand or whatever. But the reality is we all mess up. We cheat on a test. We make fun of our friends. We lie to our parents. We don't do our chores when we need to. Or whatever else in your life is going on. We mess up. How we respond to that mess up, though, is the real thing. You see, you got two responses here. You got Moses and you got Aaron. Like I said, Aaron makes an excuse. He says, well, the people wanted me to do something. They wanted me to, to help them out. They were scared. They didn't know what to do. And so I helped them. He made an excuse. 
He didn't own up to his sin. And then you have Moses, who, well, he didn't really sin because he wasn't there. But Moses responds by intermediating for the people. He owns his people's sin, right? So Moses is basically Israel's leader right now. And so his people messed up, and he owns that mess up to God, and he talks to God about it. He says they have messed up, but spare them. You see, after this, God wanted to destroy the Israelites. He wanted to just be done. But Moses interceded. He understood that they messed up, and he asked God for their forgiveness. He stepped in and he mediated. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. But basically, Moses responded well. He understood that there was sin, and it was messed up, and it was wrong. And he understood that God is forgiving. And so he went to him. And I want to give you guys an example kind of of, of sin and how uh, sin will mess with us and how we can respond and worship God despite our sin. Because the reality is we are all sinners. Romans tells us that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, which means we're not perfect. We're going to mess up. So how do we keep worshiping God when we keep sinning? Well, I want you guys to think about a professional athlete uh, or a professional musician or we can go esports, professional esports player. I watch esports. They're so crazy good. And the thing about professional athletes is that they are the best because they mess up the least, right? They are the best because they hardly ever mess up. Tom Brady hardly ever throws a pass that doesn't go well, okay? Think about your favorite musicians, your guitar players, or your drummers. They hardly ever miss a note because they have practiced and put so much effort into it. Your favorite esports player have been grinding the game for years. They play hours and hours a day, perfecting their headshots. Whatever it is, whatever you enjoy, uh, the pros at that are there because they hardly mess up. Now, why do I say that? Well, because life and learning to live with God is similar to that. You see, we all mess up. We all make mistakes. But the trick is to keep going after those mistakes, right? If Tom Brady, when he was in high school, had quit when he threw an interception or when he made a bad pass, he wouldn't be one of the greatest football players of all time now because he gave up. You see, another thing that determines a great athlete or a great professional is how they handle their failures. You see, if you're playing football and you throw an interception and you're like, this is the worst. I'm terrible. I'm so bad at this game. I'm never going to be good again. I'm just going to go, Ugh, and you go sit on the bench and pout. Well, you're not going to play the best. You see, athletes who let their failures define them play the worst. They get in their head. They start psyching themselves out, and they start playing worse. Or a musician, if they hit a wrong note, and they think, this is stupid. I'm just not going to play the song anymore. Right? Well, that's no more music, right? They, they've let a single failure define their reality. Instead, professional athletes that are good shake it off, right? They shake it off. They continue moving on. If you get totally wiped in your video game, totally destroyed and steamrolled, and you're professional, you have to just move on. You can't sit on the past. And you see, that's what we're called to do in Jesus. You see, Moses mediated between God and his people, and Moses was a man, and so it wasn't perfect. But Jesus came down to be that real mediator for us, and he is perfect. So guys, when we mess up, just like the Israelites, worshiping a golden calf, or for us, maybe it's something with our siblings, our friends, our family, or ourselves. When we mess up, we have to understand that there's a mediator, and that mediator is Jesus. And Jesus loves us. And despite our failures, he still cares. And so just like, a, just like a professional, we need to be sure that we don't let our sin and our failures define us. That we get up and we keep moving forward. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you guys are having a great day, and I hope to see you guys next week. Bye.